Welcome to this fifth day of our prayer and fasting. My name is Raymond Juma from Sitam Rongai, and I'm delighted to just walk with us and remind us that today we are focusing on our nation and also what is happening internationally. Without doubt, we all know that we are facing, we are living in hard times, that even tomorrow is uncertain, humanly speaking. Not only here in Kenya, not only in Africa, but throughout the world. And we realize that looking at the scripture, we realize that we are not, the, this did not start with us. Yes, cor coronavirus or COVID-19 may be a new thing in our season, but looking at the scripture, we see many people, we see the children of Israel, we see also the persons that God chose to use in inspiring his word also go through hard times. Specifically, I want us to, today to look at the book of 2 Kings, chapter, 20, uh, chapter 6 from verse 24, a few verses there, and also I'll read chapter 7, verse 1. And the Bible says in chapter 6, verse 24, afterward, Ben Adad, king of Syria, mastered his entire army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria as they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and the, f uh, and, and, and the fourth part of a cub of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. Verse 26. Now as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, on the wall, a woman cried out to him saying, help me, my Lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord will not help you, how shall I help you from the threshing floor or from the wine press? And the king asked her, what is your trouble? She answered, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And on the next day, I said to, to her, give your son that we may eat him. But she has eaten her son. When the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. Now he was passing by on the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth beneath, beneath on his body. And he said, may God do so to me, and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. In chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says, but Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. That says the Lord. Tomorrow about this time, a sea, uh, time a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of Bali for Ashekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain on whose hand the king leaned said to the man of God, if the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat it. And so as we focus on the nation of Kenya, as we pray for the country and what is happening today, it is again clear, just as I said from the beginning, that you who is listening to me or watching me right now, you are, you are facing a hard time. It is clear that you know someone who possibly even their house has been closed. It is clear that our eyes are focusing on the government and the leaders that we look up to. But possibly, you can just imagine, a few days ago we were waiting uh, for the, the address from the president to tell us where we are and where we are going. Suppose the president came and told us, I cannot help you unless the God helps you. I cannot unlock, I cannot ease any, any, any condition that we've given in the fight against COVID-19. I think it would be a moment of discouragement unto us. But thank God that as believers today, as we pray, as we wait upon the Lord, we know that our God is actually able to help us. The king of Samaria at the time might actually have been mocking or mockingly saying, unless the Lord helps us, helps you, because we know he was not in very good condition with Elisha at the moment. But we know that 
even if he was mockingly saying so, we know for sure that our God is able to save us, is able to save our country, is able to remove all the burdens that we are facing as a country in the world in, in terms of COVID-19. God is able to deliver us from floods. God is able to deliver us from whatever siege that we are in. We know that the children of Israel and Samaria at the point was uh, had been besieged for a very long time. And so food had become expensive. This sounds like what is happening in the world. But I want to say, just as the man of God said in chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, that soon, it may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be next week, it may be next year. But I want to say that our God will not allow us to suffer beyond what we can what we can we can we can stand and so samaria had been besieged people were desperate to the extent that women were eating their children as we meet there and it had they had even become conmanship had even become part of the day so that the woman that we see here had given their son for i mean for a meal the previous day or whatever time it was and the other woman whom they ate together had eaten her son. So conmanship was there. It is possible that you have been conned out of a deal, even in this hard time. It is possible that you are, you are pressed in whatever direction. But I want to tell you, do not give up. Let us keep on praying. Let us remember our country. Let us remember our leaders so that actually it seems to me that they are also saying that we are not able to help you. We are not able to, I, we wish we can, we, we can push COVID-19 out of our country. There seems to be desperation across the board. But I want to tell us, as believers, it is good that our God is going to deliver us. And so, the thing is, God is going to help us as we pray. Let us not doubt what he says today, that tomorrow, next week, whatever time that he has seen, God is going to come and is going to deliver us and we are going to overcome and we are going to get out of these challenges. And we pray that the government is going to get breakthroughs in whatever they are doing. And so I want to encourage us again that we don't give up. We are almost there and God is going to come through for us. Amen. We can pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this nation that you have given us. We thank you that even when we have been pressed hard, even when what we have been reading in the news, Jehovah God, has been discouraging, what we have been seeing around the world is discouraging. We know for sure that as we wait upon you today, Kenya is going to be healed. The nations of the world are going to be healed. We know that Jehovah Lord, that we know we might have seen and fallen short of your glory. We might have indeed not obeyed the commands that you have given us. And as such, the challenges that we are facing all over may be as a result of that. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that you are going to forgive us. And even as we wait upon you, our land, our nation is going to be healed. We remember other countries of the world that are also facing uncertain future. Lord, we pray that you are going to come through for them. And as a church, as a people in Kajiado, as a people in Kenya, we pray for the success. We pray for the healing of Kenya. We pray for the healing of the economy. We pray for our leaders that you are going to be with them. We worship you. We give you glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.